Welcome to Nerdities. Bitches. No topic too absurd. Well, I hurt myself on that one. No statement too asinine. No question too interesting. That's right, everybody. It's another Nerdies interview show. That's how we start, and this is how we do them. I am Mike, joined as ever by... Justin. We don't have a Kyle, but we do have a... Ben. And still trying to remember what order he comes in. Peter Gibbons. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> our, our guest tonight is uh, one Caleb Palmquist, who is a writer, I'm going to say extraordinary, because everyone who comes on the show is pretty extraordinary. <laughs> uh, would you like to take a minute to tell folks about yourself and uh, what you want them to know about? Sure. My name is Caleb Palmquist. I am a comic book writer. I've been writing comics for about eight years, and right now I have a comic book on Kickstarter called Dragon Grit, which is a fantasy western comic. The images look really good. Who's the uh, artist on it? Kay Woolheiser. Pencils, inks, and colors? Yeah. That's that's a pain, because I, I do all that crap on our comic, and it's not it's not easy. It's one of the things that holds me back because I have no faith in my colors. Uh, <laughs> you can you can click the elevator pitch, I guess, on Dragon Grit. Sure. So this is a Western travelogue story, like True Grit or Three Ten to Yuma. Um, the main character's name is Vera. She's an ex outlaw who is trying to make a living on the straight and narrow. Ends up agreeing to escort. Um, a young man from out east who doesn't know his way around the west on a um, mission across the west escorting his dying mist dragon to her ancestral dragon graveyard um, in the same way that elephants have elephant graveyards um, all the while they're being pursued by bandits uh, that's the story it's pretty interesting. Now, I think of something like 310 to Yuma or like True Grit, one of those, like you said, a travelogue, as something that's kind of slower and you, you're <laughs> following the characters as they go along this kind of arduous journey. But you got a dragon, which makes me think the trip could be really quick. Is that is that like the end of the dragon's life, one of the things that's kind of slow in that tempo? Yes. Yeah, so essentially, to get where they're going, the only person or being that knows where they're going is the dying dragon who can no longer fly. Um, and so to get there, they have to go on foot and follow the dragon. Um, and, uh, and that kind of forces them to slow down. Yep. Okay. That brings it down to road level, <laughs> street level. But if it's, if it's like Western, they didn't have many streets. It was all just <laughs> dirt roads. I gotta say though, uh, you got a great voice for VO. Got nice bass. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you've got radio voice, man. Oh, thank you, Caleb. Where are you from? Um, Spokane, Washington. Okay. For some reason, Pacific Northwest. When I looked you up earlier, uh, for some reason, New Jersey popped up. Well, I'm not the only Caleb Palmquist. Well, uh, yeah. in the world. <laughs> It had uh, it had the I, image of one of your books, though, which I'd like to talk about, too. Uh, well, it's okay. New Jersey is um, where my collaborator Dave Lentz lives. Uh, so it's possible that's why I'm being connected with New Jersey. Um, or or he lives near New Jersey, rather. Sorry. He, he lives adjacent to New Jersey and uh, talks about his dangerous treks into New Jersey. Um, and um, anyway, he... Um, uh, he's my letterer. He letters all my books. Gotcha. Uh, and has been for a long time. Yeah, we're from Jersey. All four of us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime we hear the word Jersey. Who was like, oh, yeah. someone close? Um, yeah, no, uh, no, I've never been. Um, in fact, I've never even been to the northeast like corner of the country at all. See, I hear Bro. Pacific, and I go, yeah, but I've lived in San Diego for a couple of years. Okay. So you haven't had real pizza. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Oh, Caleb. <laughs> I'm uh, surprised I, that Justin wasn't the one that brought up pizza. I'm very yeah. happy. Vinny, Vinny, Vinny beat me to it. Chase. Dude, five seasons strong in Sopranos. I'm, I'm very Italian right now, okay? <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Justin. Unicorn Vampire Hunter. 
might be one of the fucking coolest ideas I've seen in a comic <laughs> in a long time. I was like, oh shit, look uh, at this. I love all these things. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Unicorn Vampire Hunter was like my first big book. That's the first thing that kind of took off for me. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, um, it is what it sounds like. It's about a unicorn who hunts vampires with his horn. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. As I was reading up, does the unicorn talk? Oh yeah. 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 The, The unicorn is, this is like a very minor spoiler that you learn about in the first issue. If you read it, the unicorn is actually a prince who is cursed to live as a unicorn. Um, an evil witch so he does he does talk okay not by a vampire so it's like he's transposing his anger on the witch to vampires or they're all kind of uh kind of i mean the the witch is kind of the villain of the piece but the the vampires are an important part and uh the vampires are kind of plaguing the magical forest where the other characters live um and so Kind of the unicorn protects the forest and kills the vampires. Uh, yeah, you got to beat the mini boss before you get to the big one. That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, you, Video game rules do apply. This sounds like perfect for animation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would love that. I people ask me that all the time. Like, when is this coming to animation? I'm like, you know, I don't know. I would love if if Netflix calls me. You know. I mean, I'm happy to take their money. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's certainly not something that I have the expertise or, or experience to to do myself. So, you know, if you're out there and you're in charge of an animation company, give me a call. That sounds a lot like us. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing a thing. If you've got money to do a thing, we'll do it with you. <laughs> we'll kiss your ass all day long. We just want to make things. All right. We'll croon, we'll swoon, we'll talk about your business and or product. That's George, <laughs> That's Joe's whole line. <laughs> uh, Caleb, I can't help but notice the comic boxes behind you. Oh, yeah. That is quite a collection. Uh, those are just all my books. Um, most of those books are just full of the same copy. Like, each box has, like, the same copy, like, 150 times. Um, and so, and I've got... Um, more you can, the things you can't see are even more books uh the graphic novels are off to my right here um and uh yeah this is kind of my organized chaos where i pack orders because i do everything myself so it's you know sometimes i convince <laughs> my wife to come in here and help me out a little bit but she lasts for like an hour you know <laughs> yeah everyone, everyone has their own crazy yep Yep. There is, I think there are two boxes back there that are like Kickstarter comics I've backed that are like full of those. Um, and then, uh, I, I, I'm not much of a pull list guy anymore. I get like a few things. I was getting, um, firepower, uh, Kirkman's firepower for a little while. Um, I, I, um, I mean, I'm, I, I, it's still on my pull list. I just don't know if it's coming out anymore. Um, but, and then there's like a few things that I get, but I used to be a big pull list guy. And then, uh, I had just like a crap load of comics and I, you know, didn't know what to do with them. And, uh, and then I moved and I sold most of them. So, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm like, I write indie comics, so I'm much more into indie comics nowadays. I mean, I always like, like X-Men and Spider-Man were like the things that were my favorites as a kid, but, um, I only have so much expendable money, and when I do have it, I spend it on making more comics. Yeah, I just uh, clicked over to your Kickstarter, and you're doing pretty good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. Like, what you you definitely went over your goal. Oh yeah. Is this your first Kickstarter project, or have you done? Oh, I've, no, no. All right. Uh, this is like my twenty fifth Kickstarter project. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've been doing it for a while. We're in the game here. Do you have any specific secrets of success when it comes to promoting Kickstarter stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, plenty. Um, I mean, I don't have any silver bullets for people out there, but I do have um, some advice. I mean, um, I keep up a newsletter 
that I email every single week. I know a lot of people say sign up for a newsletter. We won't send you emails all the time. And I, but I don't lie about it. I send you an email every single week. Um, if you're on my list, um, but I get people involved, uh, get people to vote on covers and, and all sorts of stuff. And then I give them free stuff if they're on my mailing list. So I'm not very active on social media, but the, the mailing list is like definitely key to promotion. And then also a backer kit launch is kind of just like another, uh, email list. Uh, backer kit launch is a service that if you don't know, is a service that lets you email everyone who's ever backed one of your Kickstarter campaigns before. Um, and then as you go through the campaign, it self-selects out the people who have already backed the current one. So they're not getting another email um, if That's they've already backed it. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So those are yeah. kind of like the the two big things. And I mean, you know, I do stuff like I go on shows and I do podcasts and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, But I would say, you know, the biggest thing that I do is just continue to interact with and, and communicate with the people who've already supported me um just keep growing that base diligence that's awesome that's really uh, really really awesome to do like the I, fact that you're constant communication yeah i was looking at uh, modern mythology too one of your other books uh i only saw the one image in the on your main page but pretty sweet designs and with something like that is it an intertwined anthology, one continuous story, or just each their own thing? So that was a, uh anthology that I edited. Um, so it is, they're thematically linked, but that's about it. Um, so there's like 17 stories in that book. Each one is like retelling a myth from a different place in the world in the modern day. And each one had a different like writer and artist, letter or team. Um, that was a book that I put together, I want to say in 2019, and then uh, I did a sequel to it in 2021, I think, um, which is out of print now. But um, yeah, those were, that was kind of my, me venturing into the world of like editing and like assembling a big project with a bunch of other creators. Um, and uh, it's definitely an interesting experience, very exhausting. Um, but I think the book turned out cool. There's definitely some cool stories in there. And I made some good friends doing that, collaborating with people I wouldn't have otherwise collaborated with. The concept like that, do you do you shepherd it the whole way or just hand out concepts to people and see what they come back with? It's kind of what I would want to ask, too, with like your artist on uh, Dragon Grit. It's a question I've asked a couple of the people we've had on. Do you kind of helicopter parent these stories or do you let them go off and then bring back and then nurture the child together. Um, so for an anthology, it's way more of like, go forth and do your thing. Um, for those anthologies, I had a theme. So like the first one was like hero's journey theme, uh, hero's journey stories. Um, and, uh, basically I let people, I, I put out a call to, a bunch of people that I knew who made comics and asked them if they wanted to participate, gave them a theme, let them pitch to me. Um, and then, and then we like maybe talked through the pitch a little bit and then they made a comic and came back. Um, that did a little bit of editing at that point, but it was, it was, um, not a ton of oversight other than like some quality control editing, but with something like Dragon Grit, something that I wrote, I mean, I wrote Dragon Grit with my wife, actually. Uh, we co-wrote it. Um, her name is Laura Light Jonathan. She's a novelist. But um, with something like Dragon Grit or Unicorn Vampire Hunter, I definitely have, um, I write, you know, I write a script and I give instruction to the artists, but I also am a big believer in collaboration in in comics and of course you know like i'm paying for it i wrote it and so like to a to a large degree it's my story but i give i def, i think i give a lot of room to the artist i don't write scripts the way that i think um would necessarily be considered professional or quote unquote correct uh my my scripts kind of say okay page one this is what happens and here's the dialogue and the only time i ever like specify a certain panel 
is if I really think one, uh, like something needs to be highlighted in a panel. Otherwise I'm, it's just like a description of what's happening on the page. And I think I have a very good sense of what can fit on a page, but I also write in a very decompressed way where I put like way fewer actions per page. than I think most writers do, um, and so that really gives the artists like a lot of room to, to play with that. Um, and, and kind of put their own spin on it. That's a huge amount of trust to just be like, yeah, something like this happens plus that up. Yeah. I mean, the thing is I only work with really talented people. So, uh, so I, that trust is easy to give someone like Kay Wilheiser is like one of the best, I think one of the best artists doing indie comics right now. I mean, I live in fear every day that she's going to get snapped up by a big publisher uh, and that, I've, that I'm not going to be able to work with her anymore. And so, you know, to me, it's a no brainer if I'm working with someone who I've worked, especially someone I've worked with before and who's talented, you know, I want there to be that collaboration because if I say, okay, I outline six panels and I describe down to the exact detail what's in each of those panels, um, there, there may be some really cool shit that the artist could have come up with that they're not going to do because they're following this exact blueprint that I put out there. Tell me about Space Monkey Nights Go. <laughs> yeah, Space Monkey Nights Go is a book that I created with Dave Lentz. Um, and he is the letterer on most of my books. Uh, he came to me with this idea a few years ago. Um, he He's about 10 years older than me. And so between the two of us, we have uh, 80s and 90s um like Saturday morning cartoons, just like occupying a large amount of our brain space. Um, and, uh, and he, so he wanted to, he wanted to do a Saturday morning cartoon. It was like a real throwback. Um, and it's got a lot of inspiration from like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Voltron and, and things like that. A little bit of, um, Powerpuff Girls. Uh, and, um, it's about, four monkeys who are like genetically enhanced who get sent out to explore the the far reaches of space um but they're hooked up their sleeping pods are hooked up to a database of all the of all of mankind's knowledge but instead of getting all that they just get all the information about king arthur and his knights so they wake up believing themselves to be knights of the round table um and then they save some innocent people innocent uh, aliens from a swarm of um, evil aliens and then their leader, who is like a powerful um, sorceress, gives them magical uh, sci-fi, like Voltron-like space armor and declares them to be the Space Monkey Knights. Um, that's awesome. So that's, that's what that is. I, I love it. That's, that's awesome. That's 100% childhood fantasy right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Caleb, yeah. we got two things for you. You said you, you're writing Dragon Grit with your wife. Mm-hmm. I, too, run another company with my wife, and I know sometimes there's a little bit of the... It's a lot different than, like, household arguments when it comes to creative differences. Oh, yeah. How's no, that? That's, uh, that's, that's a for sure an element. We recently had um, a little bit of an argument about an upcoming plot point in one of the, one of the issues that's coming up. And, um, I mean, you know, it's, um, it's definitely interesting because I think when I collaborate telling a story with, uh, anyone else, I'm much more willing to be like really assertive and tell someone, um, like I'd be meaner, I guess. Cause I think like when you're working with someone on a story, you're like, especially if you have like a clear vision you know, you're you, kind of the normal rules of etiquette for me or go out the window. Um, I think I'm like, I'm, I'm like a way more relaxed than I was when I was uh, in high school and college. But I, I went to film school and I like really thought I was going to be like Steven Spielberg or Roland Emmerich or something. And I was like, I'm going to be an asshole because that's what film directors do. And like, this is my vision. Um, and I've definitely chilled out on that a lot. And, and I think collaborating with my wife is actually, um, a really good lesson in that because, um, being able to 
slow down and be like, okay, I like really need to consider everything here. And it's like a true collaborative process. If anything, it's chilled me out more uh, because I, I can, I can't be as much of like a, a little dictator. I think I can relate with that. I, <laughs> I think it's toned me, it's toned me down with these guys a lot more because I do have to think about not flying off the handle. Uh-huh. Cause like my, uh, my problem is I'm always right. So like, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes that causes a lot of friction amongst the members of the group, but working with her, I've learned that even though I am probably right, she's going to end up right in the, the long run anyway. <laughs> Well, I, um, yes, I would also say that, um, I think it's, it's been a good lesson for me just collaborating with everybody because I I think like, like I said, I only work with talented people and that includes my wife. I mean, you know, like she is a very talented writer and, um, you know, I respect her a lot and being able to slow down and be like, are there some good ideas here? Um, has really opened me up to some real possibilities, um, this book is as much hers as it is mine. Uh, she came up with the main character and her dragon. Um, that's fully her vision. And so, yeah, it's been good. And we, I haven't had to sleep on the couch yet. So that's good. Excellent. <laughs> um, last question. What's the, what's your fandoms? What are my personal fandoms? Yeah. So you mentioned X-Men and Spider-Man oh. earlier, but like, I'm sure the tastes have grown, right? Yeah. TMNT. Oh yeah. I'm a I'm a big turtles guy. I love turtles. Uh Donatello is the best one, of course, obviously. Um and um I uh but I had an ex who was a big uh Michelangelo person and which is fine. That's a, an opinion you're allowed to have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um anyway, um I, I'm also a really big Star Wars guy, which I know is like cliche, but I'm uh, I'm I'm very into Star Wars, and I only get more into Star Wars just this morning. That Acolyte trailer dropped, and it looks oh, awesome. That better be Thing beauty, MA. <laughs> yeah. <of> man. <laughs> have you built your own lightsaber yet? I have not built my own lightsaber. Um, I do play. There's a Star Wars trading card game that has recently come out, and I'm like deep into, uh, like unhealthily deep into. Um, so, so there's that. Um, and then, uh, you know, outside of that, I mean, the obvious is like um, I love westerns, and uh, I like really eat up westerns. That's something that that I've been like exposing my wife to more and more. Uh, but there's not a lot of good Western content as much as, I mean, it's the superhero age, right? Yeah. Like, everything is superheroes. Yeah, you have to go back to, like, the 70s and 80s yeah. to right. get really good. Like, right. get Silverado might be the, the highest form from that time. And yeah. So, so Silverado, Tombstone, and then, like, 310 to Yuma. Every decade has a really good one. <laughs> hey, don't, yeah. don't leave out Young Guns, bro. Uh, say, don't leave out John Wayne. I mean... I'll leave out John Wayne, and no. I, I don't know about MTV West. Hey. I, mean, I loved it as a kid, but like, uh, I, I'll leave that to go down in the blaze of glory. <laughs> the one that the one that was always on the TV at my grandma's house, like every time I went over, was um, Gunsmoke, uh, oh, the TV show. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and so I've seen a lot of episodes of that, <laughs> just because like being at my grandma's house, like that was what was on. <laughs> Seen a lot of episodes because I was forced to, but I got used to it. I kind of got yeah. into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for your time, Caleb. Uh, want everybody to check out uh, Dragon Grit on Kickstarter. Dragon Grit is the name you should be looking into, and Caleb is the person you should be giving some money, at least a dollar, at least a hi <laughs> here, fella, have a dollar. But more, more to the point. No, check out his book and help fund it. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you. Plug all the things you need to plug. <laughs> oh sure. I mean, um, if you search Dragon Grit on, if you just Google Dragon Grit, the first result is like an Air Force training program. Um, but I'm the second result. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, don't, be, don't be roped into that. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, But DragonGrid.com will take you there. Also, CalebQuest.com will take you to my website where you can sign up for my newsletter. And that's really the place you want to be if you want to hear about my stuff. Um, I have Twitter and Instagram, but I don't post there. So oh. I wouldn't not... Um, follow me if you like. Uh, and once or twice a year, I'll post something. Um, it's good to know we don't have to whore ourselves on those two sites in order to get a Kickstarter going. Yeah, oh, for sure. In fact, I would say... Um, my early attempts early on to do social media to get a Kickstarter going were not, didn't work. And so I was like, I, I don't care. And I started doing the email list and that works really well. So, you know, you don't, you don't have to post controversial opinions on Elon Musk's ex uh, to, to get money. Crash roots. Crash roots is the way to go. <laughs> I use Twitter just to argue with wrestling fans. There you go. Time well spent. It's past time. Okay. Uh, so seeing as this is an interview show, we don't usually end it the same way. We're just going to say nerdities.com for all your nerdities needs. Sponsored as ever by Simple Creations by Justin, simplecreations.com. That's right. Get some cakes, get some cookies, get some food. Order it online. It'll come to you. Easter coming. Buy it or now. Passover. Yeah. Buy all your sweet treats. For your uh, I don't have kosher stuff, Joe. Oh. Don't, really? I'm, I don't know if you've noticed, Joe. Shonda. I'm not Jewish. You want me to go bless it? Yeah, come bless my st- my oven and stuff. Will be good, <laughs> Rabbi. Oh, you mashuganist. Okay, <laughs> uh, the opinions of the Nerdy's crew are idiotic and poorly thought out. Knowing next week's would be far more insulting. Thank you, Caleb, and everybody else. Fuck bye. Fuck bye. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Because of the end of civilization, the Clamp Cable Network now leaves the air. We hope you have enjoyed our programming, but more importantly, we hope you have enjoyed life.